2010, Formula Rosa opened to the world. It was a ride that was built at Abu Dhabi in Ferrari World. That would be the fastest coaster in the world, launching riders from 0 to 149 miles per hour in only 4 seconds. This ride was built by Intamin and has still claimed the title of being the fastest coaster in the world. So after 10 years, there has been no coaster that came even close to breaking this record of 149 miles per hour. So let's see if there's any possibility that there is a coaster that could break the 200 mile an hour mark. What are the chances of this ever happening? Is it safe to have a ride go at this top speed? And is it even possible for a manufacturer to construct a coaster this size. So let me break down everything there is here on Grand American Coasters and let me just get straight into this. So the first thing to look at for a coaster that goes over 200 miles per hour is the fact what manufacturer could build this kind of ride. So let's first look at the obvious choice, which is Intamin, who holds the record for the fastest coaster in the world with Formula Rosa. So they're the obvious choice what to look for first. So the problem with Intamin is how they use the launch system for Formula Rosa. Currently, Intamin hasn't really been using their hydraulic launch system. This system is using a catch car which hooks onto the train under and propels it forward like an aircraft carrier. They use a giant motor that pulls the car forward to reach its top speed. But unfortunately, the system of launching riders isn't that reliable for the coasters. On some of the rides that they use the hydraulic launch on, they experience tons of downtime. If you want to know a really good example, look at Top Thrill Dragster. So the hydraulic launch maybe not be the best kind of launch system they use for a coaster that goes over 200 miles per hour, but it probably could be. If it's somehow modified to reach higher speeds, it could be a better use to get the car up to the speed, but it's just so unreliable. It may not be the perfect launch system to use for a coaster to go 200 miles per hour. So another launch system that could be used is an air compressed launch. Now these launch system, they go from from zero to a very high speed in a very short time frame. A ride like Dondadampa at Fuji Q Highland in Japan they use a launch system to launch a rider from 118 miles per hour in 1.56 seconds. So this could be an effective launch system because this version of launching the rider is they can get the rider up to top speed in a very short amount of time. There are a few problems with the system and why it could probably never work for this version of building this coaster. First thing is Donadampa is built in 2001 and the company that made it called SNS, they haven't made any other rides like this in a very long time. They've only made two of this kind of model with this launch system. It's not just the launch they use, it's also the car. They use a tire system car, like something you see in a regular vehicle, to provide more traction to launch the ride to top speeds, but this has proved to be a very difficult system to adapt to a ride. This launch system could be very effective for a 200 mile per hour coaster because remember, to get a ride to this speed, they're gonna need a very long track length or runway of track to launch the car to that top speed of 200 miles per hour. Air compressed launch could be a better method. You just need a very short launch track to get the top speed. When hydraulic, they're gonna need a very long and drawn out launch area that could launch this ride to that top speed. And hydraulic launches, they don't get to that top speed fast, fast enough as an air compressed. Like Formula Rosa, it takes four seconds to get to 149. They really need a very long launch track so it could be able to get to that top speed. Plus, air compressed launches, we haven't seen that good of a track record with them. I mean, we see Max Force, but there's nowhere near something like Donadampa. Then, like SNS's biggest failure as a way to claim the title as the fastest coaster in the world was Ring Racer, which is a ride intended to have reach 135 miles per hour, but the air compressed launch wasn't able to get it to that top speed, and they had a massive failure with this, as it only existed for six days until the whole thing just shut down completely. The ride never actually hit 135, but only 99 miles per hour, so Ring Racer was a total flop, and that was SNS's largest launch coaster project they have ever done. So they're probably not the most reliable company to make this. So it's best to probably just look at Intamin to build this because they have a track record to get a ride to a very high speed. Hydraulic launch doesn't seem that well to do it coaster that reaches 200 miles per hour. I mean, they could probably use another launch system like an LSM. Same problem with these, these things 
are more reliable, but they're more gradual. They reach a higher speed and a longer period of time. Intamin's fastest version of an LSM launch coaster is Red Force. It reaches 118, but it takes that in a longer period of time, so it's going to need a longer track length. It's not just the launches that are a problem to get a ride to this top speed. I mean, I'm no engineer. I'm pretty sure these manufacturers can somehow figure a way to get a coaster to this speed with their technology, but there are a few other problems that they have to face with a coaster going at 200 miles per hour. First of all, it's kind of dangerous. I mean... When you're going this fast and there are like something like bugs in the air, when you just zoom down that track, it is and the bugs hit you in like the eye, then mm. it make you go blind. I mean, yeah, that's not that big of a problem considering Formula Rosa, they use goggles. So that's not that big of an issue. Another thing, this ride, it won't be going 200 miles per hour the entire time. Formula Rosa, that thing only goes 149 for... Uh, the first five seconds of the ride. If you look in the POV, once it hits the end of the launch track and goes up on that first airtime hill, it's actually being bombarded by tons of brake fins to slow down the ride. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's going maybe 110 or 100 at this point because you have to slow down the ride because when the ride's going this fast, it's going through a, a tight curve. It has to go at a reasonable speed, so the G-force isn't too intense on the riders and the track, so it's not causing too much tension between the train and the track. And a ride going this speed, they'll have to make sure to draw out the elements even more. They're not going to have as many tight elements on this kind of ride, because they have to make sure a ride going at a high speed as this to go through effectively and doesn't cause any strain between the track and the train. This way, the ride can effectively make it through the course and nothing bad will happen. And make sure this ride doesn't exert too much G-force on the riders because any ride that's exerting more than six Gs is considered harmful to the rider because all that pressure that's pushing down on the person in the train. So if a coaster did go 200 miles per hour, it would be a pretty long time because technology now, as I see it, it's not ready. So we're not going to see a ride that reaches 200 miles immediately. And maybe a launch isn't the way to go to hit 200 miles an hour. Maybe they'll build a super tall coaster that can reach the speed by just going off the drop. But again, that doesn't seem likely either. So it's going to be a pretty long time until we see something that beats Formula Rosa. Just like it's a long time to see a coaster that'll break King Nakaz height record. So comment down below of when you think a 200 mile per hour coaster will ever come to the world and what park do you think we'll see it at? Remember to hit that subscribe button to enjoy more content on Great American Coasters and I'll see you all next time.